Imagine a world where love knows no boundaries, where a 17-year-old Palestinian boy finds himself captivated by the enchanting aura of a 16-year-old young girl from the land of the enemy. It's a land that once devoured his childhood village in flames, forcing its people to flee to a foreign country. At the dawn of their story, he wrote poems and love letters to his beloved, which she still possesses to this day. But Destiny had a different plan for the young Palestinian lad, whose heart burned with both passion and fury. Not only did he grapple with the burden of an occupying enemy that seized his homeland, but his love for this young Israeli girl became a forbidden flame. He channeled his emotions and tension into the language of poetry and ended up in prison. When she went to visit him, the Palestinian boy wrote, Between sand and water, she said, I love you. And between desire and torture, I said, I love you. This is the true story of Mahmoud Darwish, a Palestinian poet and writer who fell in love with a young Israeli girl named Rita. In this video, we delve into the biography of Mahmoud Darwish and his love life. By the end of the video, we clarify the destiny of his relationship with his Israeli beloved. Mahmoud and Rita met during a time when Mahmoud's parents returned to Israel and started living in the city of Haifa in northern Israel. However, it is important to note that Mahmoud had to leave his homeland due to events of displacement and the destruction of his village. In the following, I will explain why and how. Mahmoud Darwish, an enduring figure in sustainable literature, was born on March 13, 1941, in a village in Palestine called Albira. He is widely recognized as one of the most famous Arab poets, with his poems reflecting the experience of displacement in Palestine. When Mahmoud Darwish was just six years old, the Israelis set fire to his village, and he and his family were forced to flee to Lebanon. After a long struggle, the village of Bira was eventually reclaimed from Israeli control, but upon the return of its inhabitants, they found everything destroyed. In an interview, Mahmoud Darwish recalls, I have vivid memories of when I was six years old, living in a peaceful and beautiful village. I distinctly remember one summer night, as it was customary for the people of village to sleep on their roofs. My mother woke me up, and I saw myself running through the bushes with hundreds of villagers, bullets beats above our heads. Mahmoud Darwish later became actively involved in the struggle of the Palestine people. Beginning when he was just 14 years old, he was frequently arrested by the police and imprisoned in the city of Haifa. It is impressive to emphasize that Mahmoud Darwish began composing poetry while he was still a student. Moreover, his first collection of works was published in 1960 when he was just 19 years old. With his second collection, Olive Leaves, published in 1964, he gained recognition as one of the prominent poets of resistance poetry. Mahmoud Darwish's poetry primarily revolved around two main themes, love and politics. He skillfully blended personal emotions with political and social commentary, capturing the complexities of the Palestinian struggle and human condition. His words become a testament to the resilience, dignity, and longing for a homeland that defined the Palestinian identity. One of his poignant quotes about war encapsulated perfectly. The war will end and the leaders will shake hands, and the old lady will still wait for her martyred son, and the woman will wait for her beloved husband, and those children will wait for their heroic father. I don't know who sold the homeland, but I know who paid the price. Mahmoud Darwish traveled to Moscow in 1970 to further his education and later moved to Cairo. Impressive things about him include that he served as a member of executive committee of the Palestine Liberation Organization for several years. He also held the position of head of the Palestinian Writers' Union and was the founder of al Kamel one of the most significant literary and modern periodicals in the Arab world. Furthermore, Mahmoud Darwish, along with Jacobs Derrida and Pierre Bourdieu, co-founded the International Parliament of Writers. It must be said that Mahmoud Darwish has published 22 collections of poetry to date. In addition, several prose books have been published by Mahmoud Darwish, among which the most notable are 
Dervish lived for many years in exile in Beirut and Paris. He is the author of over 30 books of poetry and 8 books of prose, and earned the Lenin Cultural Freedom Prize from the Lenin Foundation, the Lenin Peace Prize, and the Knight of Arts and Buzz Letters Medal from France. He lived in exile for 26 years, between Beirut and Paris, until 1996, he then settled in Ramallah in the West Bank. Mahmoud Darvish passed away in August 2008 following heart surgery in Texas, USA. Darvish was a member of Israel Communist Party. He joined the party not because he felt ideologically in tune with it, but for the reason Israel Communist Party was the only political framework that gave legitimacy to the expression of Palestinian national sentiment. This was the time when Rita and Mahmoud met. Darvish used to send her intimate love letters for decades, and at the age of 70, she has still preserved these letters carefully. The relationship was sorrowful and tragic for both. When it was discovered that she was working for Israeli Mossad intelligence, he said, I felt like my homeland was occupied again. In 1992, the last time Darvish wrote a poem dedicated to her was after their meeting in Paris. The title was Rita Winter. In this poem, Darvish says at the end, Out of my ignorance, I called you a homeland, and I forgot homeland can be taken away. The fascinating fact is that Darvish was very conservative in his emotional and marital life. He likely attracted the attention of women throughout his life, not only due to his exceptional poetic power and charm, but also because of his wit, good looks, and impressive personal charisma. However, Mahmoud does not mention any specific individuals who were part of his relationships with women or depict them in his poems more than he does with poets and innovators from around the world. While well, some believe that the love poems he created did not revolve around himself, but rather the concept of serial al Qariba, a stranger woman, as a secret expression of his love for Palestine. The poet firmly rejects this notion. In his conversation with Abdulwazan, he emphasized that a woman is not merely a tool for irony or symbolic representation of the notion and struggle. He asserts that a woman has the right to be herself and adds that if his writing takes another direction beyond the context of discussing love, it is acceptable. The captivating truth is that Rita, mentioned by Mahmoud in the poem, was an exception to the rule. It later became evident that this name was not real. The poet's inspiration in his early years was none other than a Jewish girl named Tamar bin Ami, with whom he had a brief emotional relationship. However, before the October, 1967 war, they had to part ways and return to their respective camps, were continuously engaged in fighting. Despite being one of the most prominent poets, Darvish preferred not to incorporate significant political and national issues into his relationship with women. However, this particular relationship translated mutual emotions and transformed into expressive symbols within the complex realm between myths and subsequent history. By shifting roles to the contemporary context, it resembles another painful and challenging relationship akin to the story of the Jewish figure Samson and the Palestinian figure Delilah. Even if Rita does not represent the real Tamar, it does not exclude the possibility of her being a combination of various women, including left-wing writer Tanya Rehart, as some believe, or Israeli poet Dalila Revkovich as others believe. It is not unlikely that Rita's persona in the poem is a composite of all those women, with overlapping qualities that Darvish points out, similar to Pablo Neruda, whose poems were deeply enamored by women. One of his beautiful quotes about love is the following, Maybe it was something, not important to you, but it was my heart. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and found it useful. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Bye!